For me, there's a mystery around the shark that was what drew me here in the first place. You know, they're deep water animals and we don't really know that much about them. One of the largest sharks on the planet normally stays out of sight. The blunt-nosed six-gill shark prefers the most distant reaches of the world's oceans. They inhabit what is one of the world's largest environments, the deep ocean. These are sharks that like to hug the bottom. They're designed so that they're very hard to be seen, they're very cryptic. People rarely encounter this monstrous fish because it lives three to 6,000 feet down. Yet divers from around the world now hope to find them in shallow waters, only 60 feet deep in one of the busiest bays of the Pacific Northwest. Well, there are many reasons to come to Seattle, but it seems at the moment to be the best place to come to find six gill sharks. Simon Rogerson edits Great Britain's Dive Magazine. Eric Chang founded WetPixel, a website and quarterly magazine for underwater photography. Yeah, I'm used to kind of going off to exotic places and coming to Seattle is, was, was uh, something that confused a lot of my friends who think I'm always in you know, the South Pacific or something. Both have come to Puget Sound to see six gill sharks in person. They are deep water sharks, but uh, in a very few rare places, mostly in the Pacific Northwest, it's possible to see them at uh, diver friendly depths. Travis Swanson owns Team Hydrus. He's made a business of leading divers to six gills. This week, he believes he's found some. They've shown up at the south end of Puget Sound, just a spitting distance offshore. Under his boat, he's anchored a dive cage to the sea bottom. The cage is actually like a mini wet sub. Uh, it can go up and down on those ropes as needed. We can inflate and deflate the main pontoons to raise it. Plus, he's installed underwater lights and TV cameras, which feed back a continuous live picture. And it creates a very interesting experience, almost an eerie glow. And you know, we try to keep the light levels to where the sharks aren't too disturbed by it. But will the sharks appear? Travis finds the odds improve if they dive at night. For three days, Simon and Eric dive in shifts all night long. It's nighttime. Um, we don't know what's out there uh, beyond the small area of water illuminated by our torches. This sea is a big question mark for us. They see plenty of crabs, dogfish, and ratfish. To lure sharks, Travis ties a block of frozen bait to the seafloor. What the Team Hydras are doing with the lit baiting scenario is something I've never seen before. As the bait sits, everyone watches the live TV feed on board. They'll dive at the first sight of a shark. The whole start of it was to see if we could attract them to a specific location to do science. Underwater tagging, underwater tissue sampling. The Seattle Aquarium decided this was a research opportunity too good to pass up. Jeff Christensen is the aquarium biologist and dive safety officer. We worked very closely with the dive community to find out a lot more about the animals, where they were seen, when they were seen, sifted that information, turned it back into the dive community, and ended up getting more information. We've now set up a research station right below where I'm standing. Stand copy, loud and clear. The aquarium also put in a safety cage, but theirs doesn't move. It's anchored at the bottom of Pier 59 in downtown Seattle. The sharks come to us, and that's really the exciting thing about this. The reclusive giants arrive with slow, deliberate movements. Quickly thawing bait clearly works to lure them in. Here comes another shark. Cool. There is a concern that the animals might become habituated, coming to an area where food is present. We limit our research to six opportunities a year. We're able to go in the water and observe them as they interact with the food or just interact with the area. And then as they swim by, we're able to place tags on the outside of the animals. I nice shot, beautiful shot. Watch your right, shot. The second spear is the biopsy dart. It gets that small BB-sized piece of tissue from the shark as it swims by. And you have to give it a short, sharp jab because sharks have very, very tough skin. Most of us are a little too gentle on the first try. And you'll, oh, you'll see even here, there was an attempt that missed. The tag didn't place. That's way too far of a shot for you. Most sharks have five gills. These, as you might have guessed from their name, have six. And that ominous dorsal fin most sharks feature sits small and fairly far back. Wow, look at that, cutie. Six gills appear more closely related to sharks found in the fossil record from 200 million years ago than they are to sharks living today. 
they're a six to nine foot long animal. And as a, as a six kill shark, you're a six kill shark middle schooler at nine feet long. You're not an adult by any means until you get over 10 feet long. So why has a shark, which spends most of its life, hundreds or even thousands of feet deep, come to Puget Sound? Jeff readily admits they don't know, but they have a hunch. Puget Sound may be a very important nursery ground for six kill sharks. Females look like they may be releasing their pups somewhere in Puget Sound. We're not sure what the males are doing here yet. It may be more than a good place to give birth. Puget Sound makes a safe zone for young sharks to grow up. They're staying together as siblings or small groups of siblings. So the animals that arrive here for a research event most often are brothers and sisters. After they grow up here, where do they go? Probably out to the open ocean. Scientists aren't sure because the signals from the tags they implanted eventually ceased. The researchers had good luck luring sharks to Seattle's doorstep for a couple of years. Then they stopped showing up. But Team Hydrus continues to find them elsewhere in Puget Sound, away from downtown Seattle. Okay, ready, clear. Travis also has another unique ability, the ability to move around. Most of our research is tied to this particular site, so we're hostage to the animals coming to us. The recreational divers have the safety cage at the bottom, a safety diver with them, and another safety monitor watching the TV feed above their heads. I'm dive support. I keep my eyes peeled on this monitor the whole time. Simon and Eric have dived with sharks all over the world, but never at night, nor in a camera-equipped cage lit like a Hollywood set. I've done a lot of shark diving, and I don't, I don't feel exposed down there at all. First night we came in, we had sharks immediately, and within five minutes, we had three individuals show up. They're an animal I never thought I would be in the water with. It wasn't something I thought I would actually get to see with my own eyes. One of the most elusive sharks in the world has come in for his close-up. Eric captures these scenes from the cage about 20 feet from the bait. These are not guys you mess with. You have to respect these sharks. The biggest one we saw was about 12 feet long. They have a lot of girth, which is something that I hadn't expected. I mean, there are sharks in areas close to major cities, but not this close to shore and not this rare a shark. Um, there are so many firsts here, it's really exciting. As if seeing sharks weren't rare enough, Eric twice records some remarkable behavior. For a time, a six gill ignores the bait and roots in the sandy floor of the sound. Some scientists think this is a form of eating, sucking in large numbers of small crustaceans and filtering out the silt. Travis is pleased his recreational dives add to what little scientists know about this mysterious creature. You guys good? Something science had never seen before. That's pretty impressive. I mean, think about if there was a huge grizzly bear just outside of downtown Seattle and we didn't know anything about it. That's basically what we have here. We have a large predator shark uh, that we know nothing about. Conservation of these animals is what's most important to us. Sharks worldwide as a whole are really taking a beating through human activities. And this is an unexploited animal. and uh, We want it, we'd like it to remain so. To see something wild and uncageable in its own environment is a privilege. The six gill is one of the ocean's last great mysteries. 